Today, using ValueLine's digital platform and investor tool, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily find worthwhile investment candidates. Going further, I'm going to recommend one stock to buy right now. After the presentation, as mentioned, we have a lot of time for questions and answers. To start, for those joining us for the first time, I want to provide a brief overview of who we are at ValueLine. We are a New York headquartered corporation that has been providing investment research for more than 85 years. Our flagship product is the ValueLine Investment Survey. This service is a unique source of financial information and is designed to help investors make informed investment decisions that fit their individual, level, the individual goals and levels of risk. The product includes data, information, and analysis on more than 1,700 equities that trade on the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and Toronto Exchange. It also includes economic commentary, easy-to-follow model portfolios, stock screens, industry-based analysis, and much more. This service, which is published weekly, is created by ValueLine's research department, which is comprised of more than 70 analysts, economists, data experts, and quantitative specialists. Our research is completely unbiased and independent. Unlike many Wall Street brokerage firms, ValueLine has no investment banking business with any company, including the 1,700 that are included in this survey. ValueLine does not execute trades for subscribers and therefore has no vested interest in whether our subscribers buy, sell, or hold a specific equity. What's more, our staff professional securities analysts are not permitted to own shares in any company that they cover. As part of the formal presentation, let's start with an overview of the economic situation as well as the ValueLine Research Department's view of the stock market. Obviously, this will help us with our search for a stock to buy right now. The following content was prepared by Harvey Katz, ValueLine's chief economist. The consumer is still in the game, with data issued recently showing further gains in retail spending. In all, activity was brisk at furniture outlets, grocery stores, and restaurants, and especially at building materials dealers and over the Internet. On balance, Sales are being bolstered by rising home prices, the historic run on Wall Street, and higher wages. The importance of strong consumer spending cannot be overstated, as this category accounts for more than two-thirds of economic activity. The industrial sector is also doing well, with figures issued last week showing strong gains in industrial production and factory usage. These advances followed reports affirming that the pace of manufacturing also had quickened late last year. Such broad participation augurs well for 2018, in which the nation's gross domestic product is likely to advance by upwards of 3%, assuming no serious weather-related difficulties evolve during the current quarter. The drop in the corporate tax rate from 35% to 21%, which will boost company profits as 2018 moves along and possibly lead to an acceleration in wage growth, should provide support for the economy going forward this year in both the consumer and the industrial areas. But such business strength is coming at a cost, as inflation, dormant for years, is now starting to rise modestly, with costs increasing for housing, utilities, and medical care. Should this rise in prices persist, or possibly accelerate, the Federal Reserve likely would step up the pace of the interest rate increases. For now, though, Wall Street's bulls are fully in charge, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average, boosted by strength in high-profile industrial, healthcare, and financial names, leading the way higher with a recent surge past 26,000. Optimism about earnings and a sense that the Fed will proceed cautiously on the rate front underscore our constructive market outlook. In conclusion, notwithstanding the market's rich multiples and consequent constrained long-term appeal, prices could still go higher in the short run. Now that we have a firm base in regard to the economy, stock market, and our outlook, it is time to find a stock to buy right now. As you can see, I am currently at our homepage, ValueLine.com. On this page, you can access, free of charge, daily market commentaries, as well as general interest articles that are written by our analysts. Examples of such content are analysis of economic releases and quarterly earnings supplementary reports on the 30 components of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Um, obviously, it's earnings season now, so for those that are interested, here's a few that we just wrote today. I'm now going to sign in with my username and password. After entering my credentials, I am taken to the welcome screen. From here, 
I can quickly get to many important areas of our website, including Browse Research, which is the main home for our core equities products. I can also head to our investor tool, as well as the home pages for, home pages for our monthly stock selection services. That said, for this presentation, I want to start at the dashboard, which is the main landing page for subscribers. As Harvey Katz mentioned in the conclusion of his market commentary, not, notwithstanding the market's rich multiples and consequent constrained long-term appeal, prices could still go higher in the short run. Before we go any further, I want to quickly expand on the first part of that statement, and let's see how the value line universe of 1,700 stocks is currently being valued. To do this, the weekly summary, index, summary and index is a good place to start. This 40-page PDF can be accessed on the Quick Links. As you can see in the box on the left, the median stock in our universe is trading at 20.7 times our 12-month share earnings estimate to June 2018. This is a good time to mention that value lines estimates are created completely in-house by our research team. Our PE calculation is also different than many other research houses. More specifically, we use a combination of reported figures and estimates for our PE ratios, which we think is better than using a trailing figure or just estimates. The PE of 20.7, on a historic basis, is quite high, but is consistent with levels reached during other multi-year bull markets. Nonetheless, at these levels, there are surely a great number of overvalued stocks, or, put another way, equities that are trading at unsustainable multiples. In addition, elevated PEs are often associated with higher risk, and a disappointing earnings release could result in a sharp price decline. Thus, I'm going to definitely consider this metric when looking for one stock to buy right now. Let's also take note of the median dividend yield, which is just 1.9%. In addition, Value Line's 3 to 5 year median price appreciation potential is only 25%. We have been calculating this value, which is commonly referred to as the VL max, for decades, and this is among the lowest levels ever reached. Over time, the VL map has proven to be a worthwhile indicator for evaluating the broader market, and a number of published works have focused on this proprietary metric. For those interested, I recommend a simple Google search. All told, and I'm certainly not going out on a limb here, but Valueline thinks the market is expensive. However, we think that stocks may well have higher since we are bullish in regard to the 2018 economy and market. I will certainly use some of this criteria in my screen. Let's now go to the screener and find some candidates. This important investment tool can be accessed via the Find Ideas tab at the top of our website. Subscribers have access to more than a dozen preset screens, as well as almost 50 fields. I should also note that the screener possesses more than 200 fields in total, but those are only available with a higher level subscription. I'm now going to run a screen. Since we discussed it earlier, and it is important, let's start with price to earnings. Simply click on the field, and we'll fill out the criteria. This can be completed in a couple of ways. I can use the sliding action bar to set my range, or I can type the values in the from and to box. As mentioned, the median is 20.7, so I'm going to focus on stocks that are currently trading below that level. Reason being, I want to avoid stocks trading at lofty and likely unsustainable valuation. I also want to remove stocks that are trading at very low multiples, which often implies that something, besides earnings, is impacting the stock. This can be a legal matter, recent management turmoil, or signified industry that is currently out of favor. Thus, I'm going to set the low bound to five, which will also remove unprofitable companies. And of course, I'm going to set the high value to 20.7. <clears throat> okay, that's a good start. Next, with the market at such lofty levels, and we want to avoid those inevitable bumps in the road, I want to include a field that would provide some defensive property. There are numerous risk and volatility measures, with beta probably being the most popular. However, I'm going to utilize Valuelance proprietary safety rank. The safety ranks measure the total risk of a stock and is, ranged on a, and is arranged on an easy-to-understand 1-to-5 scale with one being the most stable issue. I want to highlight the fact that stocks ranked favorably for safety have, in the past, 
held up far better than the broader market during corrections and downturns. For this, let's focus on stocks that have risk profiles that are better than average. So I click on the field <coughs> and select one and two. Only the largest, most financially strong companies earn top marks for safety. I now want to make sure that the stocks we focus on are expected to grow its bottom line over the near and long term. The projected three to five year earnings growth rate field will work well for this. And I also want to highlight that Value Line is one of the very few research houses that provide financial projections that far out. We think that these estimates are of great value to our subscribers since they show a long-term trajectory of the company. A lot of times, a company will introduce a hit product, but it may be short-lived. These projections will show whether a business has long-term staying power or if it is just a passing fad. So for this field, let's set the low end to 12%, which is a healthy level of growth. I'm going to add one final field, which will further cement my preference for near-term performance. As mentioned in Harvey Katz's commentary, prices could still go higher in the short run. So let's focus on a short run metric. Value Line's timeless ranks are perfect for this. For those that don't know, Value Line has been ranking stocks for timeliness since the 1960s, and it measures the probable relative stock price performance over the next 6 to 12 months. The ranks, just like safety, are on a 1 to 5 scale with 1s and 2s expected to outperform the broader market over the next 6 to 12 months. So let's go with 1s and 2s. And there you go, three candidates. According to our criteria, these three stocks are reasonably priced, relatively safe, and ought to outperform the broader market over the near term. For those of you that are Value Line subscribers, you probably know that we have been bullish on Apple for a long time now. For instance, it has been a component of several of our model portfolios for a while now, in some cases years. As for Toyota, I actually recommended that stock during my December 20th webinar, which can be viewed on our homepage or YouTube channel. Since then, the stock has advanced about 10%. For comparison, the S&P 500 index is up less than 5% over that same period. I hope that at least a, at least a few of you, and many other Value Line subscribers, followed that recommendation. As for today, I think that Apple and Toyota remain good selections with ample investment appeal. That leaves analog devices, ticker ADI, which is this month's one stock to buy right now. Clicking on the company name will take us to the Equities Digital Report, where the data, information, and analysis is arranged in more than 15 modules or boxes. These modules can be moved around, resized, and hidden, so you can create your own customized stock report. For instance, let's say I'm most interested in the analyst commentary. I can simply click and drag that box to the top. In addition, now I want to see more rank-related information. For that, I simply click on the larger rectangle in the heading. Once I alter the presentation to my liking, I can save the changes from the sliding horizontal bar. The next time I come to this stock report, it will look the way I set it up. Let's first get some quick information about Analog, which is available in the Business Overview module. The company manufactures processing chips that convert light, sound, temperature, and motion into electrical signals. I simplified it a bit because uh, semiconductor companies are, uh, are hard to understand. Um, every electrical device that you have has semiconductors, but it's hard to pinpoint what that particular uh, product is. Uh, the Massachusetts-based corporation has 10,000 employees, and the officers slash directors own 1.1% of the common stock. How has analog devices stock been doing of late? From the, value on, from the valuation module, I can quickly pull up the stock chart, and the yellow line is the equity's performance. As you can see, the equity has done quite well and is now trading near its all-time high. I'm now going to take a look at the analyst commentary to get some information in regard to what is going on in Analog. Editorial analyst Alan House 
stated the following in his most recent report. Earnings growth ought to remain solid, at least through fiscal 2018. The company is well diversified ge geographically, as sales outside of the United States account for slightly more than 60% of the total. This is good news as it provides a level of support when a region is struggling. On the domestic side, we look for continued healthy economic improvement as the Trump administration appears to be business friendly given its stances on regulation, infrastructure spending, and corporate taxes. Also, the linear acquisition should provide increasing synergies, at least in the short term, as the kinks are ironed out. I now want to show you our classic PDF report, which is included with a digital subscription, and provide some analysis on why we think ADI is a good choice. In the statistical array for 2018, we estimate share earnings of $5.20 a share, which would represent a year-over-year -year gain of 11%. The healthy rate we envision will be fueled by a near 20% advance in sales and healthy margin. Also, in the commentary, Mr. House mentions the benefits from the linear purchase and that demand across analog segments all increased of late. As for the stock, we think it stands out for the year ahead and checks a lot of boxes. It trades at a low multiple versus the market. It is ranked favorably for both timeliness and safety. And earnings are expected to increase light nicely. You can also see this from the annual rates box. All told, Analog Devices, ticker ADI, is one stock to buy right now. I hope you found the method for finding a stock to buy right now interesting, informative, and efficient. That said, I know that this process does take time. That is why I want to highlight that Zyline offers a variety of model portfolios that can help alleviate the work of finding worthwhile investment candidates altogether. Part of the Zyline Investment Survey is the weekly Selection and Opinion Newsletter. Along with economic and stock market commentary and data are four model portfolios. Each one is a different investment strategy, is actively managed, updated each week, and always contains 20 stocks. The portfolios are overseen by senior research analysts. To get to the selection and opinion, this can be done from the dashboard quick links. Portfolio 1 is best suited for aggressive investors and focuses on stocks that are expected to outperform the broader market over the year ahead. Portfolio 2 should be of interest to more conservative investors and focuses on dividend-paying stocks that also offer worthwhile appreciation potential. Portfolio 3 chooses equities with long-term price growth potential and, of course, is best suited for patient investors. Portfolio 4 is filled with stocks that possess above-average dividend yields and is for investors seeking current income. We have a great number of subscribers that follow these portfolios. For those interested in possibly adapting one of these strategies, here are a few helpful details. New positions always amount to 5% of the market value of the respective portfolios at the time of the trade. Any dividends received are simply taken as cash. They are not reinvested. Lastly, the portfolios are not rebalanced. All told, the portfolios represent some of the Value Line Research Department's best investing ideas and we recommend that you read the analyst-created content and look over the portfolios for, for possible additions to your holdings. Subscribers looking for a total investing solution are also encouraged to check out our premium monthly stock selection services, Zyline Select, Dividend Income and Growth, and Special Situation. If this is something that sounds up your alley, call 1-800-ZYLINE for a free sample report. This marks the end of the formal presentation, and I will now tackle your questions. Um, there's a few here, so just give me a sec. Okay, uh, here's the first question about the timeliness ranks. Um, why and when a stock is upgraded or downgraded? Okay, um, an upgrade or downgrade can, uh, can occur for a variety of reasons. Um, first off, um, we, uh, it's a, first off, it's a quantitative program. 
So um, this is all done without any human touches. But um, uh, changes in um, an earnings release, uh, meaning uh, it's like earnings season now, um, if there's a number that is uh, different than expected, higher or lower, that can change the rank. Um, the price action of a stock can change the rank. Other uh, notable news, um, and importantly, the ranking system is a forced bell curve. Um, and I'll explain what I mean by that. At all times, there are only 100 ranked one stocks, 300 ranked twos, um, 300 ranked fours, 100 ranked fives, and the remainder are in issue are in rank threes. So, if a company, for instance, is a rank two and they have a really good earnings number and it pushes into the rank one, a rank one stock has to be kicked out. Um, so those are the reasons. Uh, so sometimes no news might occur on a company, the stock price might not change, and the rank might go up or down. Um, and ranks are updated every week. Um, what would you recommend for hedging your gains? Uh, covered calls, trailing puts, or something else? Um, I'm not the, the, the foremost expert in, recover, in, in, uh, in options, but covered calls make sense to me. Um, this is a good time to note we have a full options product, and I recommend you take a look at that. Um, how do you know the market is beginning to turn and the bear is about to set? Um, I wish I did know that. Um, we can look for clues about valuation, um, trading volume, and the momentum of the market, but you know, market timing is I would say impossible. Um, you can just use the information you have. Um, this question is, uh, will there be a recording of this? Uh, yes. Uh, within the next 48 hours, it will be on our website and our YouTube channel. Um, let me see if there are any more. Um, oh, here's one um, about um, uh, we about getting the history of the ranks. Um, unfortunately, we do not publish those. Um, but if, if you email me, um, I'm sure I could probably get you uh, some stats. Uh, and my email is igendler at valueline.com. That's the letter I, G-E-N-D-L-E-R. Um, next question. Um, does time in this ranks consider upside potential? Um, that there is a factor in the calculation, but it's important to note that the majority of the variables that go into the time of the strength are historical and known. So, um, for instance, long-term estimates uh, are not included in the rank. Um, how do you decide if it's time to sell the stock? Um, that actually depends on the product. Um, if you're looking at our ranks, for instance, if you're a conservative investor and it's, the stock is ranked two, and uh, maybe they take on more debt or they don't make as much money or don't have as much finances um, open to them, and we change the rank, uh, that might be a signal that it's no longer uh, a good idea. The time of this ranks works the same way. You know, a lot of people buy or hold the ones and twos and sell when it goes to three, four, or five. Um, if you follow one of the model portfolios, we do that work for you. We tell you. Um, when there's a trade, you know, we're selling this stock and buying this one. Um, if you are a subscriber to Value Lines Flex or Dividend Income and Growth, um, when we sell a stock, we send you an email or a text message. Um, sorry, email or phone message um, telling you of the sale and why we did it. Um, all right, well, another question was, uh, when does the stock remove from portfolios one, two, three, or four? Um, it's in the write-up that's actually on the screen now. Um, just a uh, highlight here, we're making no changes to Portfolio 1 this week, but if there was a change, it would be discussed in the, um, in the write-up. Okay, um, please elaborate on how you determine your financial stability rank. Um, I'm, I'm assuming the, that was meant as financial strength. Um, that's another proprietary rank. Um, that is a grade. Um, up to A double plus, um, and looks at a variety of factors like profitability, cash flow, debt, debt to capital, um, et cetera, a lot of balance sheet items. Um, how do you get to the model portfolios in the subscription? 
Um, as a VLIS subscriber, for instance, it's uh, in the quick links. Um, certain subscriptions do not have access to those model portfolios. Um, uh, oh, my email again, it's uh, I-G-E-N-D-L-E-R at valueline.com. Uh, you can also call 1-800-VALUELINE if you want to speak to a sales associate and they can get a hold of me. Um, do you have any technical analysis? Um, most of the analysis we do is fundamental, but our we have a value line investment analyzer product, which is a desktop application, which has technical analysis. Um, a question about ADI specifically. Um, ADI is near a high, um, and you're not concerned. Uh, and the question is, are you not concerned about uh, buying at a high rather than waiting for a pullback? Um, I don't think the stock. Yes, it's at a high, but I don't think it's very expensive. Um, I think it's actually nicely valued right now. If there was a pullback for whatever reason, I think it'd be a better buy. Um, are there historical rates of return on the model portfolios? Um, that's also something we can provide, um, but it's not published. Um, I think that's all the questions. Um, oh, and to note, obviously, we went over a lot of products and a lot of attributes of certain products. So if you do want, if you want more information, we do offer trial subscriptions, uh, which you can get through our website and through 1-800-VALUE-LINE. Um, all right, was one last question. Um, as a day slash swing trader, what value line product would you recommend? To be honest, we don't have that many products really geared towards day trading. Um, you're going to want more technical analysis um, and a lot of charting, which we have, like I said, in that VLIA product. But there's, to be honest, probably better things out there for you. Um, all right, with that, um, those are all the questions. Um, I want to thank you so much for attending. Uh, take care, and uh, like I said, this will um, be available on our YouTube channel and website within the next 48 hours. Thank you so much.